Yeah, Brian Baldinger, courtesy of the Bud Light guest <laughs> line. Uh, I'll just tell you this. You know, I'm obviously work in San Francisco. I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania, so this game's going to be a doozy for oh, me. Oh, wow. You played in Philly. Uh, you know, you, you watch games every weekend, but does this one, does this one, like, more fun for you, or you, you get more into it almost? Yeah, I feel like, uh, well, I'm into it. I'm totally into it. Uh, you know, the fact that Philly's here and, you know, Philly fans are, I mean, I stayed here, Steiny. Yep. When I got done playing with the Eagles, I stayed in Philly because I'd never seen a fan base like this, you know? And, like, I, I've been through championship losses and 76ers and Flyers and Phillies. I've been through it all, you know, as a fan. And so I, I know what these fans are like and how they live and die on this stuff. I saw them crying five years ago, Steiny, for six straight months out of, you know, just joy, just pure joy of winning one. And it feels like they still haven't won one. They still feel disrespected. And, but I feel like we got the two best teams, Donnie. Like, I, you know, I, if it came down to the final drive, like, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, the way these two teams are playing and the way that they're constructed. No, Baldy, and that, that takes you to my, my question for you. For those that, that don't follow you on, on Baldy, I do want to let everyone know that you're a huge, you're an avid Shark Week aficionado. And... You know, when you're talking about who's the deadliest shark, well, it does depend. Is it freshwater? Is it open seas? Is it a bull shark? Is it a great white? Like, how do you decide in a in a matchup between San Francisco and Philadelphia where a lot of their, you know, their game plans, their styles are similar? How do you decide who you think is going to win the football game and where you fall in this matchup? Sam, I always go to the trenches in these matchups. You know, the Eagles were just so much better than the Giants last Sunday in the trenches. I mean, it, it was a beatdown, but... It was pretty easily predictable, even though, you know, they had, the Giants had played well in Minnesota the week before. I feel like the Eagles are, are better in the trenches than the 49ers. I mean, not because they have 70 sacks and five last week, 75 total, not just because of that. Just the way they are, like, just the way that they're built. Lane Johnson, Jordan Malata, Tra- you know, Jason Kelsey. I mean, you just go through the list of guys. They just look better to me, in the trenches. That doesn't mean that the 49ers can't win the game, but if you ask me that question, like, where do I go to? I go right there. I go right inside the trenches and go, okay, if the Eagles are in a five-man defensive line and Javon Hargrave is one-on-one with Aaron Banks, who's going to win that matchup? You know, and so that's kind of how I break it down right now. Hassan Reddick on, you know, Mike McGlinchey, I don't know. Like, I, I'd have to favor Reddick in that matchup. So uh, that's kind of where I start. Doesn't mean that's where it's all going to come out. Sure, Brian Baldinger joining us on 95-7 The Game. Uh, for a guy like me who watched last week's game, I thought the Dallas defense was was really good. Can you you know tell a guy like me what would – because I hear Philly's defense is good. Like compare and contrast those two defenses, yeah. what to look for. Yeah, you know, you know, what I saw last week, Steiny, was I thought the speed of the Dallas defense – really showed up against the 49ers. They scored one touchdown. I mean, look, they won the game. They scored one touchdown on a two-yard run by McCaffrey. But, you know, you saw a bunch, and to his credit, you saw a Brock Purdy, you know, just throw the ball away a bunch and being chased and harassed by, you know, Micah Parsons and Tank Lawrence and some guys. And I thought that – and the Eagles defense isn't – I don't think they're as fast as Dallas. The Eagles don't have anybody that approaches Micah Parsons' speed and closing speed uh, when a quarterback is flushed. But, they, but they're but they more physical than Dallas. They're much better up front than they are. And I think their corners cover better than the Cowboys' corners cover. Uh, and so, like, if you said compare and contrast, I'd say Dallas is faster. But I think Philadelphia, their front, their pass rush is better. And I think their secondary is better than Dallas's. Well, well that would lead me to believe, Baldy, that Kyle Shanahan is going to want to run the football early and often against this Philadelphia front. Yep. I know they tried to do it against Dallas. It didn't work in the first half, but they got it going in the second half. Do you expect a similar slugfest type of style from Shanahan and the 49ers, even though we've seen Brock Purdy be able to light it up through the air? Does it all start on the ground? That's how they got to win, right? I think it's a big part of it, Sam. You know, there's a great scene in last week's game towards the end of the second quarter before halftime. And Juice is sitting down with McCaffrey, and they got a tablet and a, you know, they got a telestrator there, and Juice is showing something to McCaffrey. And I felt like they they had things that they had to figure out. It's not a game plan thing. 
not even a coaching thing. Sometimes players got to figure things out. And I thought once the, I saw that thing on the sideline, it, like the third quarter, they looked like the 49ers running game. Like they really started to pop. McCaffrey started getting some runs. Eli Mitchell started getting some runs. They started running the ball consecutive plays in a row. And I felt like they figured some things out. It might be something like that this week. But I, I'm with you, Sam. I think the way to slow this rush down is a variety of runs. And it could yeah. be Debo and fly sweeps. And, it, you know, it could be formations that we haven't seen with McCaffrey and Eli and, and, uh, and Debo. I mean, but I, I feel like that's where it's got to start for San Francisco on Sunday. Brian Baldinger joining us on 95-7 The Game. Let me ask you this, is, and you might say this is all of football, but if if I'm Kyle Shanahan and I'm thinking about the other side and I'm thinking they're going to try to stop our run, well, then you gotta you got to try to make them think you're going to run yeah. but pass, right? right? Isn't that the way? Yeah, you know, like, look, aren't it, you trying to make a team think you're going to run when they think you're going to pass and vice versa? So the the way the Eagles get around that, Steiny, honestly, is they're about the only team in the league. They play a five-man defensive front. And, you know, sometimes you play a five-man front to stop the run. they got a guy right on top of, uh, you know, your center. And so, uh, you know, it could could be a variety of different guys. But, I mean, that's kind of how they line up. They play one linebacker and a safety. Now, it's good if you've got five guys up front that can really key on stopping the run. But if you get past that front – you got a, you know, you've got Chauncey Gardner Johnson at 190 pounds playing linebacker. I mean, you could get some big runs. In fact, you know, Saquon last week ripped off a 39 yard run, and they were just out of the gaps, and they got pierced. And it has happened this year. That's why they went to a five man front mm-hmm. because they were getting run on. Fletcher Cox is getting older; he's not playing the run quite like he used to. I'm not picking on Fletcher, but um, you know, I mean, he's 12 years in this league. You know, he's seen his better days. So. They, they went to a five-man front. They signed Indomitian Sue. They signed, you know, different guys to kind of plug that middle because they knew it was a weakness. And so I think that there's ways that you can get, whether it's, you know, outside zone or cutbacks or whatever, I think there's, there's lanes there that you can get created. Baldy, one thing we've been discussing today on the show is, is which quarterback has to do more for their team to win. I feel like it's Jalen Hurts just because – of how important, like we've been talking about, the running game is for San Francisco. Do you see it the same way, or, or do you think that Brock Purdy needs to be great on Sunday if San Francisco wants to walk out of Lincoln Field with a win? Well, I think if San Francisco wins the game, Sam, I'm going to, on you know Monday morning at 5 a.m., I'm going to have six Brock Purdy throws that are sensational throws. Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, you know, like even the one to Debo last week, or not to Debo, but to Kittle last week, the one-hander. I mean, you know, he's the third read in that progression right there. Now, Kittle made a great catch. But, you know, he's going to have to make six. I, I, I'll call it a six-pack of Purdy throws that he's going to have to make to go on the road and beat this Eagles team. However, to answer your question, I mean, the, the one thing about both these quarterbacks, they don't turn the ball over. Like, they're very good. Uh, Brock Purdy's very good. You know, he's very adroit at just throwing the ball away and getting to the next down. And really, the strength of Jalen Hurts this past year has been two things. One, he's a great deep ball thrower to A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, whoever. And he is a great decision maker. And in that decision making, he turns the ball over very little. And we haven't seen Brock Purdy do a lot of that. So, you know, what defense can force the, uh, the quarterback into the turnovers, because let's face it, San Francisco, San, you guys won last week over Dallas because of the DAC interceptions. It was came down to right. one was in the red zone where they took points off the board that led to a field goal, and you know the first interception you know led to a field goal. That was the difference in the game, and so that's what it's going to come down to: who can force the other quarterback into creating mistakes. Yeah. Hey, Baldy, thank you so much. As always, really appreciate it. And uh, man, can't wait for this one. Likewise, Donnie. All right. I, I didn't know you were from Reading. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you're going to, you know, it's part of you says go birds right now. Not sure about that. Yeah, they're getting on me out here, Baldy, but I, I'm hanging tough. <laughs> okay. All right. Take All right, care, buddy. buddy. That's Brian Baldinger.